quand est-ce que vous avez su que vous vouliez devenir écrivain Ah, uh, you know, for a long time, I like sort of resisted calling myself a writer. Um, I don't think I started calling myself a writer until I um, got an agent. Uh, I have always written, right? And 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 uh, I, I, ever since I started learning how to read, I was always writing down stories and telling stories and was passionate about stories. Um, and that has always been a part of my life, but it it never was necessarily very clear to me that that was um, a thing you could do as a as a vocation. Even though, I mean, Elizabeth was doing it, right? My mom, my mom was doing it, and, and, and um, but for me, I was I was always uncertain, um, and it always seemed that writing lay in sort of the act of writing, and I could never get too precious about it. You know, I was I, was, I worked really hard in school. Um, I was in the library a lot, and um, I. I, uh, I had time finding sort of the, like when one talks about writers, one of, oftentimes has this sort of idealized view of, mm. of the conditions under which they write mm. um, and, and of writing rituals and sort of the preciousness of it, you know, moleskin notebooks and um, spending every morning. And, 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 and there was something about the, the sort of the romance of being a writer that, didn't seem to have anything to do with what I was doing, which was like scribbling down stories like in my spare time, you know, like a, like a little bit in the morning, like a, a, a little bit in the library when I was free. Uh, I was passionate about it, but it never seemed to be the image of, uh, of writers. And then after college, I, I was working all the time. Like I was, I was working in order to right I, I worked at target i cleaned bathrooms at target i worked at a ski lodge um i worked as little as possible and i worked jobs that sort of you could leave when you left you know so that so that i could write all the time but i was still you know i was um i was writing here and there i was writing in every sort of free moment it didn't seem to be it didn't seem to match up with the grandness of, of the word. Do you know what I mean? And then you'd read interviews and, and you'd hear what that all of these writers wrote in like in perfect silence, you know, at their desk <laughs> every morning. Um, and I, uh, you know, I couldn't do that. I had a job. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I resisted that idea and I, I tried to, I tried to write and not think too much about, the cachet of being a writer. I thought that was misleading. Combien de temps est-ce que vous avez fait des petits boulots pendant que vous écriviez le soir ou sans vous prendre pour un écrivain? And what kind of jobs did you get? Uh, yeah, um, I went, so uh, I, I graduated in high school in 2006 um, and went to Willamette University um, and was 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 fortunate enough not to have to work during school to be to be a to be a, a full-time student and um not everyone gets that luxury you know um uh but i i loved it and i thought that i was going to be an 18th century scholar like that's that was like that was my idea of like what i would go on to do with my life um i wanted to study the uh the early novel Mm -hmm. the early English novel, um, and I'm very interested in the way that um, sort of books um, create and define and change our cultural institutions. Like, I became very interested in, in the early novel and in the institution of marriage, the cultural history of the institution of marriage um, and gender roles, um, and thought that that was going to be really important work that I, I would do with the rest of my life and it was sort of a job right like it, it uh like there's a trajectory there's clearness um I've always had trouble like I'm a kind of a preparer like I I, I had trouble sometimes with like big risks and um academia uh was kind of comforting in terms of in terms of having a trajectory and an institution not being alone um but I decided uh, that I should try fiction because it was something that I was doing with all my spare time. 
And um, I thought that nature was an important part of my life. And by spending 80 hours a week in a library, I was kind of losing it, you know? Um, and, and, and it had been like the linchpin of my childhood. And, and, and I'd, I'd gone away from that. And so when I graduated, I, I, I took a job um, as a trail crew leader leading youth in the backcountry of the Pacific Northwest, right? Um, and the youth were fantastic. It was, it was, it was a great job. Um, it was grueling. It was, it was, it was, it's hard, you know. Um, but it, it, it was this fantastic opportunity to spend a bunch of time uh, with all these amazing young people. So crews were like 10 young people, ages like 13 to 19. Um, and we did a lot of trail work. And I, I loved that job. After that, I worked at uh, a Target for a while. And then I moved to Salt Lake City where I worked at the Alta Ski Lodge. I don't think I'm giving you what you need. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do. You do. <laughs> you know, it's um, always interesting to, to understand. This is very American to have plenty of jobs while you are working to your great masterpiece, isn't it? I, That's what you did. I guess I, I, guess I don't know. I, I don't <laughs> know what other people do. I think a lot of people go through MFA programs, and that seems brilliant because um, I think under a lot of circumstances you have structure and support and encouragement, mm. which um, it's, hard, it's hard to like to work a 12-hour shift at a restaurant and then to come home and train right. Mm. You know what I mean? I, I, I think a lot of people um, go through MFAs for like, yeah. so they don't have to endure the misery of <laughs> working service jobs. Ça vous a manqué de pas avoir ça, ces encouragements? I'm not sure. I think I did. Um, I, I, uh, the thing was, is I, I got to Salt Lake, I got a job at a ski lodge, Um, and I started climbing pretty seriously, you know, not a ton, and I was self-taught, and that is not the way anyone should learn how to climb, you know, everyone should have mentors, mm -hmm. um, but I was sort of going in on my own, and, and, um, and uh, but I loved it, and I was doing it like 15 hours a week, um, and Harriet was in school in Salt Lake, and um, most writing programs that I could have gone to would have meant leaving her. Hmm. And and I, I was sort of, you know, in a supporting role um, while she was in school and working at the ski lodge and climbing in the outdoors. And, and, and I, I wanted to go to an MFA program. I thought that I could probably use the guidance and the help. Um, but I couldn't bear to leave the backcountry for long enough to do it and couldn't bear to leave my then girlfriend. Does that, does that make sense? It does. I mean... I didn't choose not to go to an MFA program. It just never happened.